Happy Manna Monday. Thank you so much for joining me once again on our short spiritual journey so that we can get our week started off in God. So grab your paper, grab your pen, grab your notebook, grab your Bible, whatever you need, and let's dig into the Word of God. Our Manna Monday word this week will be found in Genesis chapter 41, verses 50 through 52. Genesis 41, verses 50 through 52. And it reads, Two sons were born to Joseph before the years of famine arrived. Azanoth, daughter of Potipharah, priest at On, bore them to him. Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh and said, God has made me forget all my hardship and my whole family. And the second son he named Ephraim and said, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. God Thank you for your word. Thank you for the hearers of your word. But more importantly, Lord, help us be doers of the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, the story of Joseph is widely known. And so there's no need to rehash every detail of the story. But this, at this point in, in this juncture in Joseph's story, there's something that sticks out to me that I have reflected on over the past year. Um, because it really resonates with where I am in my life. This text introduces us to the two sons that Joseph has in Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim. Now, the interesting thing about these two sons is the meaning behind their two names. One is God has made me forget all my hardship and my whole family. The other, God has made me fruitful in the land of, the, of affliction. So though Joseph has not experienced all this success in Egypt, the, the, his two sons, the name that he chooses to give to them, still centers the trauma that he has experienced at the hands of his brothers and in Egypt. Because the reason why I say that is when you read chapters 42 through 46, that's where we uh, recount his a meeting with his brothers when they come to get food because there's a famine in their land and of course we know Joseph first hides that identity kind of tests them and then reveals that identity later but in the in the details and the subtleties of this story we see a few details we see two times where we're told that Joseph has to regain his composure because he's overcome with emotion there's another uh, part where he says uh, jo where it says that Joseph lost control of his emotions. Then in chapter 46, when he is reunited with his dad, his, his, his father Jacob, it says that he embraced his father and wept for a very long time. And even in the way that we see him treat his brothers, we see the vitriol, which he is still very much so feeling about what they did to him. And justifiably so. So this is not an indictment on Joseph as if this is completely foreign to what makes sense in our emotional paradigm, right? It makes sense. But what I want to point out is how often we seem to act or we tend to act like our trauma or our unaddressed trauma still is with us. Because we tend to make it seem like when we succeed in life, when we gain accolades, when we, we achieve things, that somehow that makes up for what is the going on internally but what this story teaches us is that success does not compensate for trauma distance does not compensate for trauma time past does not compensate for trauma as much as we like to say time does not heal all wounds what we do with that time dictates the impact of our wounds but time in and of itself as a currency does not heal all wounds because no matter where you go you always take you with you no matter where I go I always take me with me our wit our ambition our motivation our desire for success our constant scheming is no match for unaddressed trauma and so my goal here isn't to chastise Joseph but my goal here is to highlight the fact that the trauma that we leave unaddressed, 
the trauma that we don't deal with eventually traumatizes our relationships and we become emotional vultures who sabotage all the good things and all the good people that God places in our life. And, and when we act like the good fortune, all the success that we experience somehow sedates our trauma, we end up doing more harm than good to ourselves, to our relationship with God, and our relationship to others. And especially in this Western culture that we're a part of, we idolize success. We, we teach success as if success is the barometer for everything good. So no matter what we have yet to rectify, what we have yet to fix, what relationships we have yet to reconcile, as long as we are climbing the, the, the American dream ladder, as long as we are climbing the ranks of success, as long as we are uh, um, gaining generational wealth that we, we are now obsessed with in our uh, time and space, we feel like adding titles and money to our legacy somehow means that whatever internal work we haven't done is inconsequential. And that success often blinds us to the internal work that we have yet to do. But what happens is our success eventually vomits when our internal disposition is constipated. Success will never compensate for the internal work that we have yet to do. And in God's economy, in the kingdom that we are trying to advance, all that gain, all that accumulation means nothing if our relational currency is depleted, if our internal temperature is low. Because ultimately, as much as we obsess over success and achievement and careers and degrees and money and legacy, none of that transfers over to the new heavens and the new earth. The only thing that we take with us is our character. The only thing that we will recognize on the other side is the relationships and the people that we do or we, that we're doing life with now. So let Joseph's story remind us that all the success that we accumulate, because Joseph reached a position in Egypt that was unprecedented for somebody like him who was Hebrew in Egypt. Yet all that success, all that climbing of ranks, all that positional, all the positional uh, success that he gained, that was a blessing from God, meant nothing as long as there was unaddressed trauma that was still haunting him. So as you go about your week, as you go about your day, as you go about the rest of your life, please remember that success, distance, time pass do not compensate for the trauma that God is still trying to get your attention for. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, Please like it, like our page, like this video, share it. Continue to allow it to be a blessing, not only to yourself, but to others. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you, please donate in the ways that are outlined below and we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for just you caring enough about us to force us, to compel us to address the things that are painful, that are hard, that are traumatic, because you know that we cannot be our best self. We cannot be the image bearers that you have made us to be if we have unaddressed trauma. I come to you on behalf of Sister Gabrielle, who's in the hospital, the Goings family, the Bates family, the Miller family, Lord, our pastor, Pastor Wegar, this evangelistic series that has been a blessing to us, Lord. I just pray that you will continue to do a work in all our ministries in this church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.